This is uh, Professor Marsh, and I am uh, re-recording uh, for the second time uh, Chapter 2's materials uh, to uh, correct the audio problem. Uh, Unit 2, uh, actually it's, it's not Chapter 2, it's Chapter 2 in the 10th edition, Chapter 4 in the 11th edition, but it's Unit 2 in our course uh, this semester. Uh, it's called the Management Environment, uh, also known as Culture. Uh, it's not just a way to make yogurt. Uh, it can be an organizational foundation for creating and retaining happy and productive workers. Uh, culture uh, provides support and guidelines in some organizations. Culture can also be self-destructive in badly managed organizations. Uh, but it is important uh, in all organizations uh, to the role of manager. Uh, the key points uh, in Unit 2 are the external environment, to uh, learn to define and explain that, uh, to understand how the external environment affects managers, uh, to be able to define and explain organizational culture, uh, and to understand how organizational culture affects managers. The external environment. Uh, this is on uh, page 37 uh, in the 10th edition and page 131 in the 11th edition. And they describe uh, this terrible uh, volcano uh, which erupted uh, in Iceland uh, and how uh, it shut down the BMW production line in Greer, South Carolina, just up Highway 26. Uh, and uh, uh, so the external environment uh, are factors, forces, situations, and events outside of the organization that affect its performance. And certainly if your supply chain uh, is uh, affected or interrupted by a volcano uh, in a uh, country uh, across uh, the Atlantic Ocean uh, up in the North Sea, uh, that can be a, definitely an external factor. Uh, and one of the biggest mistakes managers make today is failing to adapt uh, to a changing world. Uh, and to think strategically about what, uh, what could go wrong. Uh, components of the external environment uh, can come from a lot of different places uh, and can come from many different disciplines. And so as a manager, a lot of times you have to learn about disciplines that perhaps you haven't studied much uh, in school or had much experience with in your prior work uh, 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 experience. Uh, so there are political and legal components. Uh, elections can have consequences, as, as we've seen uh, in the United States, where we keep going back and forth uh, between Republican and Democrat administrations. It has a big impact on business, uh, the differing policies of the different types of administrations, different types of Congresses. Uh, demographics, uh, changing patterns of immigration, uh, birth rate, education, race, sex, religion, language, etc. Uh, those can all affect business. Uh, economic, uh, are we in a growth uh, period or a recession? Uh, we have inflation kicking in, it seems like now, uh, versus having deflation, uh, which can you know, certainly be evidence of a depression or perhaps a, uh, a coming depression. Uh, Sociocultural. Uh, you can have a religious uh, re revival or decline. Uh, you can have the growth of activist groups uh, of, from certain parts of society. Uh, technological uh, developments, and certainly this is a big influence uh, on uh, business today. Uh, certainly things like the sharing economy, cryptocurrency, which didn't exist uh, just uh, 20 years ago, uh, are, you know, growing factors and, and all sorts of technological developments, just the continuing uh, developments in uh, uh, transportation, communication, uh, are just mind-boggling uh, to those of us who were old enough to remember how business was done back in the 1960s or 70s. Uh, and global uh, external factors, war and peace, uh, strategic material supplies, uh, and the whole development of worldwide manufacturing and assembly. So we have the sharing economy, Uber, Airbnb, using technology to share underutilized assets peer-to-peer. -peer. 
Uh, that's on page 133 uh, in the 11th edition. Uh, all of these components uh, can change, and some change as rapidly as technology. Uh, demographic change, uh, we've had uh, different definitions of marriage, family, and children, all of which can affect uh, businesses uh, with respect to policies regarding employees, policies uh, or practices uh, regarding customers, uh, socio-cultural uh, uh, differences, the changing institutions and societal customs that we have, and global, uh, the instantaneous information and nearly instantaneous delivery uh, that we now have uh, virtually anywhere around the globe. And, and maybe heading to uh, a space station uh, somewhere near you in the near future. Uh, on page 133 in the 11th edition, we get to uh, two views of managers. Uh, this again, this is a chapter two if you've, get, if you've got the 10th edition. Uh, you have the omnipotent view of manager and the symbolic view of manager. Uh, the omnipotent view is sort of the traditionalist view uh, that the manager is directly responsible for the organization's success or failure, um, that the manager is all-powerful, uh, but this view uh, is on the wane uh, nowadays. Uh, uh, the symbolic view is that the organization's success or failure is largely due to external factors outside of the manager's control. Um, it, does it mean that the manager is helpless? Uh, perhaps not. Maybe it's better to think that the manager today has to think more strategically about what could go wrong. What's our plan B if it does? What, uh, what's our alternative? If we lose our source of supply in Iceland, do we have another source of supply that we could bring online somewhere else around the world? Uh, and this view is more popular today. <clears throat> Issues that we deal with, how do we cope with the COVID economy? How do we work remotely, keep clean and safe? Avoid spreading disease to workers, customers, suppliers, transporters, etc. cetera. Uh, how do we get to customers we can no longer see? That's a big issue for a lot of businesses, particularly those of us uh, in a service economy. Our, our client's going to be happy just talking to us uh, remotely. Uh, what if a source of supply is located uh, where there's an outbreak or a lockdown? Uh, what if a country, uh, for example, China, okay, the elephant in the room, uh, cuts off our source of supply because of political competition? What if we can no longer get chips uh, to uh, work uh, in our uh, electronic uh, mechanical devices? So uh, those, are, those are all uh, factors of the external environment. So how does the external environment affect managers? Well, note that environment in this context doesn't mean climate or ecology. It refers to factors, forces, situations, and events outside the organization that affect its performance. So how do they affect uh, jobs and environment? Uh, environmental uncertainty, which is about, the <laughs> uh, about risk, and stakeholder relationships. Uh, the book asks, is management easier or harder today with all the available technology? Now, that's, that's a good question. It's on page 41 of the 10th edition and page 185 in the 11th. In some ways, it's easier because we have so much information available to us that it permits nearly instantaneous competitive benchmarking. That's the practice of imitating and trying to improve upon the successful policies and techniques of your competitors or predecessors in the same business. And we'll talk more about competitive benchmarking as we go along in, in the book. Uh, uh, there are, there's a lot of material on it in later chapters. Uh, but what's harder uh, is that we have information overload. How do you keep up with all of the developments that are available in real time? Uh, can you constantly change your practices and techniques to respond to such rapid change in the environment? Uh, how do you know what changes are most important? Uh, environmental uncertainty is defined in your book. That's uh, Exhibit 4-2, uh, or 2-2, depending on the, issue, the uh, edition you're looking at. Uh, that's the degree of change and complexity in an organization's environment. Environmental complexity 
That's the number of components in an organization's environment and the extent of knowledge the organization has about those components. Uh, stakeholders uh, are defined in your book, uh, and those are any constituencies in an organization's environment uh, that are affected by the organization's decisions and actions that can be employees, contractors, customers, suppliers, directors, stakeholders, uh, shareholders rather, uh, owners, and the public. And there's a really nice graphic of that, of stakeholders on page 44 in the 10th edition uh, is at exhibit 2-3 and it's exhibit 4-3 in the 11th edition. Uh, and I always think of that as uh, the organization is sort of a conference table and those stakeholders in those little bubbles are sitting around the table. Those are all people who have a seat at the table in today's modern businesses. Uh, also note exhibit 2-2 or uh, on page 42 of the 10th edition or page 4-2, uh, page 136 in the newer, newer edition. The environmental uncertainty matrix. The degree of complexity and degree of change are the axes. Stable and simple might be something like glass blowing or some trades that use traditional tools. In glass blowing, there haven't been a lot of developments, but there was Dale Chihuly. Uh, he was revolutionary, relatively speaking, with the scale of his works and his unusual technique. But the basic methods and practices haven't varied much for hundreds of years. Uh, think about, as a different type of business, advertising is an area in which change is happening with lightning speed as technology permits platforms to be created and monetized that were unimaginable just a few years ago. Uh, drones would be an example of an industry that was unimaginable just a few years ago. Drones for delivery, drones for security and inspection. Drones for professional photography are absolutely spectacular and have largely replaced the aerial photography business that used to require airplanes or helicopters. You see that in the real estate business all the time. Incredible aerial shots of properties that are for sale which are customized, you know, to the very property using a drone and, air, and that uh, drone photography. Uh, maybe soon we'll have drones for personal transportation. Uh, companies uh, that range from Airbus and Boeing to Uber and lots of Asian businesses are developing manned prototypes right now. There's even a drone racing league that is headquartered in Liechtenstein, a tiny country nestled between Switzerland and Austria. And their manned drones better work pretty well because there's a lot of very big mountains in that area. Uh, so uh, let's go on to organizational culture. Uh, organizational culture is the organization's unique personality. Uh, culture is perceived, culture is descriptive, culture is shared. And competitors in the same business can have widely different cultures. Think about IBM and Apple in the computer technology business. I think that's a very good example. How would you describe their different cultures? I mean, you know, IBM, big blue, traditional, you know, uh, you know the man in the gray flannel suit with the narrow tie. Uh, Apple, you know, very laid back, very creative. In fact, uh, uh, creativity is, is part of their core mission. Well, organizational culture is the shared values, principles, traditions, and ways of doing business that influence the way that organizational members act. It's, it almost becomes organizational habit. Uh, and it's uh, described well on page 45 in the 10th edition, page 139 in the 11th edition. A very important concept. Okay, moving on to the dimensions of organizational culture, and this is getting to the end of the chapter. <clears throat> Take a look at Exhibit 2-4 <coughs> in the 10th edition. Oh, pardon me. Or 4-4 in the 11th edition. There's seven dimensions of culture uh, on a scale of low to high. Attention to detail, innovation and risk-taking, team orientation. There's four more uh, beyond that. Often one or two dimensions will define an organization, and they give examples of Apple, which we talked about just a second ago, uh, or Southwest Airlines. 
What are the sources of culture? <clears throat> How do the employees learn the culture? Where does it come from? You can have a mission statement, uh, a founder story, shared histories, uh, leading by example. Uh, these are all sources of culture. And employees learn the culture through rituals, symbols, artifacts, language. If you ever go to a Ritz-Carlton hotel, uh, if you're ever served a, a drink or a, a food, uh, they have this little lion's head emblem as their logo. And that emblem always faces you when you're being served. Uh, that's just part of their culture. If you ever tell a server, uh, thank you, you get a response, it's my pleasure. Uh, uh, and there's no exceptions to that. Uh, my wife and I like to chat up the servers when we go somewhere nice if they're not too busy. And we stayed at the Ritz-Carlton in Cancun years ago for a lawyer's convention. We asked the cocktail waitress uh, about her job, and she told us that she had worked at a Marriott, which also has very good service, for 10 years, but had to apply three times to the Ritz-Carlton before she could get a job there. They tested her over and over on her language skills. She was a Mexican native, but she spoke perfect English. Her math skills and her manual dexterity. They taught her how to dress appropriately, uh, impeccably really, and they taught her that whenever you serve a customer, the Ritz-Carlton logo on the plate or glass has to face the customer, dead center. Other companies follow the lessons and service that you can observe at a Ritz-Carlton. Uh, go to a Chick-fil-A and try saying thank you to the server at the drive-in window and just listen for how they'll respond. Okay, our last topic, how organizational culture affects managers. Uh, culture affects what employees do and culture affects what managers do. Uh, culture can be the guardrails. It can be the guardrails giving strong support and boundaries on what to do and how to behave. Uh, it, it can be better than, it's much better than written rules if you have a culture that says you stay within this path, this pathway, uh, you're, you're going to have fewer deviations and, and fewer scandals. Uh, culture, though, can be corrosive. You know, you can have the, you know, kind of gallows humor, uh, you know, perme permeating people who are sarcastic and ironic about what they do. If you take risks and fail around here, you'll pay dearly for it. Note the chapters exhibit five, managerial decisions affected by culture. It's examples of planning, organizing, leading, and controlling, right? The four functions of managers. Uh, all those decisions affected by the organization's culture. And you can see some good examples of that. That might be useful to you at some time in the future. So in this unit, we've introduced the topics of external environment and organizational culture. Uh, and in unit three, we're going on to deepen our examination of the changing society, uh, looking at globalization, ethical issues, and demographic changes, as well as society's increasing expectations about business behavior and how managers must respond to these important issues. Until then, uh, have a great day, and we'll see you later. Thank you.